And I'm joined now by New York Times senior political correspondent Maggie Haberman and former Trump White House communications director Alyssa Vera Griffin. Alyssa, you not only worked in the Trump White House, you also worked on Capitol Hill during a time of um, what well, some would say chaos when the Freedom Caucus was uh, getting rid of Speaker Boehner. Have you ever seen anything like what we we're seeing play out right now? Well, for some historic context, I was there one of the times a rule vote was taken down by the old uh, the Republican <laughs> so Party. It was on, yeah, the TPA <laughs> vote. Listen, um, this is an existential threat to Kevin McCarthy, and I think you asked the key question, though, at the end is, could anyone other than him get 218? Now, a couple of things to look at here. These fights from the right, and I know these guys very well, tend to be kind of veiled as fiscal fights. This is about addressing deficits and budgets. I'm sorry, but I worked in the Trump administration. We spent as much as most Democratic administrations do. Oftentimes, it's something a bit more partisan that they're working to do, defund the select council or the, the Jack Smith investigation. I suspect what will ultimately end this, if anything does, will be some si kind of a concession on the more political side, whether it has to do with more investigations, it's empowering something on the oversight committee. I think for a handful of members like this gentleman, it really is about spending. But for those driving it like a Gates, I don't think that's ultimately what it is. And frankly, I don't know that anyone can get 218, but Kevin McCarthy probably has the best chance of holding on to it. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, what do you make of, Maggie, Trump getting involved in this, weighing in late last night, saying Republicans should not pass this short-term bill, which Kevin McCarthy and them were trying to get Republicans behind. I mean, he, he has this hope that it would affect his investigations, but as the congressman made clear, it, it would not. No, it's not going to. And, and I think, realistically, Donald Trump has been told that uh, by advisors. I think he is aware that this is the case. He has repeatedly done things that make life a little more complicated for Kevin McCarthy. Kevin McCarthy, at various points, has done things that have upset uh, pres former President Trump, including not endorsing him, which we're aware of. And so I don't think it's a surprise that he is twisting the knife here. I think that, you you know, Trump is much more aligned with these members who, as Alyssa correctly says, are talking about fiscal responsibility. And, and some of them clearly believe it, but many of them are, are talking about other things. And, and this is this is a little different from some of the early days of, say, the Tea Party, mm -hmm. when that first wave came in, when it really was much more about spending. Yeah. It has now become about all kinds of other things. Uh, and Trump cares about all kinds of other things. Spending is sort of theoretical. Yeah, it's certainly not. He's not, you know, obsessed He's with He's not a fiscal conservative, shall we say. <laughs> um, but the, what was remarkable today and kind of encapsulated for people who are, you know, it's always chaotic on Capitol Hill, watching Republicans vote down their own defense spending bill for the second time. We spoke with Chairman Michael McCall earlier this week on the show. He said in his 20 years he's never even seen that happen once. Well, and then keep in mind as well, in the Senate, you've got Tommy Tuberville ba uh, blocking Pentagon promotions. I mean, the Republican Party, my party, is quickly wading into looking like the anti-defense party purely because of these political uh, fights that are happening on the Hill. But also, by the way, government funding is one thing. FAA reauthorization is coming up. Farm bill reauthorization is coming up next week. And by the way, if Republicans shut down the government, their own impeachment inquiry, which is supposed to launch next week, won't be able to happen. So that's the one thing that makes me think the government yeah. might actually stay open. All of this is happening while we're also watching, you know, the broader 2024 field. We heard from Nikki Haley today, who is doing better in polls, at least in some of our New Hampshire polls. She's in that race for second for second place. She obviously worked for Trump and was commenting on him today. And she said this about his legacy. He was the right president at the right time. He used to be good on foreign policy, and now he has started to walk it back and get weak in the knees when it comes to Ukraine. He was thin-skinned and easily distracted. Well, some things are true there, and some were not. That what she said about how he used to be strong about Ukraine, I... That was a different period of time that I witnessed, anyway, during the impeachment battle, the first impeachment battle, uh, which was about Trump trying to withhold congressionally approved military aid to Ukraine. But in terms of that he is thin-skinned, I don't think that anybody is taking issue with that characterization. I do think that you are seeing Nikki Haley carve out a pretty interesting space of separation from Donald Trump. And you are correct that she is moving not just in New Hampshire, but in other states as well. The campaigns are all talking about it as well, that she is a, she is a, a threat to DeSantis, but she's a threat to anybody else in the non-Trump lane. And she is, look, she has a delicate line to walk because she did serve him, because she did defend yeah. him any number of times. Um, I, I think one of the things that is complicating for a lot of the folks in this current field who have praised Trump at various points, some of them still very much so, like Vivek Ramaswamy, um, is trying to reconcile for voters what has, is different but, Caitlin, Donald Trump is not a different Donald Trump. And I think that's one of the things that, that is, um, sounds inauthentic when these candidates are saying.